Quick disclaimer to the YouTube algorithm, this is an educational video about the UK laws on drugs. I do not condone them, I'm not glorifying them, I'm not promoting them. This is purely an educational video about the laws. Welcome all herbologists, horticulturalists, and all round plant advocates. Today's video is going to delve a little bit deeper into the UK herbology laws. And we're going to go over a couple of case studies that I found whilst researching for my video last week. Hello YouTube world, my name is Katie. If you're new around here, then welcome. But if you're not new, welcome back, love. So, as I said, this is kind of going off of the research that I did from last week's video. Now, if you haven't seen that, this is the video. I'm going to pop it in the description as well. I highly recommend that you pause this video, watch that one, come back here, as this is kind of a spin-off, I guess, to the last video, and it will make a lot more sense as to why I'm doing this today. With that all being said, let's get into the video. So, basically, I'll give you just a, a rundown as to why this is happening. So, when I was researching for my video last week, I wanted to make sure that the numbers were correct when I was saying that what I was facing, right? 14. So, Upon researching and making sure that I was right in my numbers, I came across a, you know, an article about a case study of a patient who also was a self-taught herbologist. And this is actually in 2020. So the article, I read it and it, it just, it made me angry, it made me sad, and it made me want to tell you guys about it. So we're going to delve a little bit into it. However, it's not just this article that I want to talk about. There are three different case studies, I'll call it, but they are very short. So don't worry, the video is not going to be too long. However, you know me, and I'm going to put all of the links to everything that we talk about down below. So if you want to look at anything that I speak about in this video in depth, then you can go ahead and just look at the links and do it at your own leisure. The first one, as I said, is in 2020. Then I have a second one that is in 2022 and the third most recent one, which is November 2023. So to start this off, I think it'd be a good idea to start off at gov.uk. Quick little uh, Google search into what our UK herbology laws are and it brings up the page that I will link below. Now I'm going to go over a few little sections here. Obviously you can look at everything yourself after this video if you so wish. I just want to make you aware of some of the information that is on this page. So first of all, you're met with drugs penalties and basically you can get a fine or a prison sentence if you take drugs, carry drugs, make drugs, sell, deal, or share drugs, right? Which is obviously also called supplying them, which we know of, right? That's obviously law. So it then says the penalties depend on the type or class of drug or substance. It's gonna be important later. The amount you have and whether you're also dealing or producing it. So we have a few classes here. Most UK people will know this. You have class A, class B, class C, and let me just read off a couple of them. I'm not going to go, you know, through all of them, but just a couple in class A include cocaine, crack cocaine, LSD, methadone, crystal meth, which you would expect, right? All pretty hardcore drugs. Go down to class B and they include some amphetamines, cannabis, codeine, ketamine, synthetic cannabinoids. Okay, class B. Class C, the lower, lowest of all of the tiers, can include anabolic steroids, benzodiazepines, diazepam. Right, uh, nitrous oxide. Okay, so those are just a few that are in those classes. Now, what strikes me as very concerning is that ketamine is in the same class as a herb. Now, that herb used to be class C, but they bumped it up to class B right before I uh, had my uh, situation. So that was great. I just don't like the fact that we already have this tier system where it's completely fucked, in my opinion. Absolutely fucked. You've got class C benzodiazepines, you know. I know so many people that were addicted to tramadol or diazepam and all of these prescribed pills. Yet they're in class C, but they're so addictive. Okay. 
So as described earlier, you also have different penalties for the different classes. So you have the maximum penalty for possession, and then you have the maximum penalty for supply and production. And these vary, obviously, class A, you would get seven up to seven years for possession and up to life imprisonment for supply for class A. Class B, up to five years in prison for possession and maximum penalty for supply and production, up to 14 years. And class C, for maximum possession, you have up to two years and for supply and production, up to 14 years. So it's very strange that for class C, supply and production is exactly the same. 14, 14, class A, up to life. Okay, just, just, okay. Just wanted to make you aware. They also go into psychoactive substance and, and things like that, but... You know, I'm not going to talk about that in this video because I honestly don't have any knowledge on it. I've never done any psychoactive drug like that, any anything in my life. I've never touched mushrooms or LSD or I've never done it. So I can I can't tell you the beings that I saw because I know exactly what happens when people do it. So today we're just gonna focus on the herbology laws. So speaking of the laws, we'll go into 2020. This is 10 years later from when myself went through this situation. There is a patient who is a patient of MS. She is a 55 year old lady called Leslie and she has a husband called Mark. Again, everything will be put into the description so you can read through everything entirely, but I'm just gonna take some excerpts out of this so that we can go through it just a little bit more easily. So in 2020, Carlisle Court acquitted both Leslie and Mark of being a self-taught herbologist. What made me really sad is the fact that when you go into it, you see that this has actually been looming over the couple since January 2019. Now that's a really important date because that's after when everything was legal, right? Right, so what's going on here? Well, she had no option but to cultivate herself because she actually applied to the NHS for a prescription for her MS, but was turned down. Okay, so the only thing she could do was either get a private prescription, which she didn't have the money for, or be a self-taught herbologist. And this was to aid her crippling MS conditions. She also has HS as well, which rings really true to my heart because I have HS. It's not a condition like MS or anything like that, but it's a skin condition that can have incredibly terrible effects up here. Um, and it does with me. And that's one of the reasons why I am prescribed medical cannabis. So reading her story, just, I broke down, like maybe it's because obviously I connect with that, but listening to what these people went through in 2020 was absolutely horrendous. Because as I digress into the story, you can see here that their home was raided by old Bill in January 2019 and Carlisle police confiscated 10 baby plants and three homemade chocolate bars. It even says here, while across the country many police forces have moved away from heavy-handed approach to patients growing for medical reasons, Carlisle CPS decided to prosecute. Yep, they decided to send it to Crown Court where it would go to actual trial, where these poor people would have to stand there even worse than what I had to go through, because I didn't go trial or nothing, you know? These poor people having this over them for a fucking year. Bro, it was so stressful. Sorry, I shouldn't say bro. There was someone that got so annoyed with it last time, but like, you know me, or maybe you don't. I don't care. This woman went through so much stress within that year that she developed sarcoma and started receiving treatment to remove cancerous cells. <sighs> but Leslie was represented by a leading human rights solicitor. It says the name of these people down here. And the defense team intended to argue, which was, you know, quite fair at trial that Leslie was forced to break the law in order to alleviate the symptoms of her multiple cirrhosis, oh, fibromyalgia she also has, and hydranta supravita, which is HS. It was to be argued that this would be what any person in her situation could reasonably been expected to do. 
which is true. Put yourself in this woman's shoes. You have MS, multiple cirrhosis, you have fibromyalgia, and you have a horrible skin condition, which causes issues with your mental health as well when it flares up, right? You've got all these things going on. Plus, you've got this case going on about you trying to heal yourself of the Sorry, I had to stop mid-sentence. Imagine, imagine all of that and you're still being dragged through the hedge. What a strong lady, what an absolutely strong lady. Like I'm so glad that she managed to hold her own through all of this because what ended up happening was it was, it was acquitted it wasn't seen in the public interest, which is absolutely true. Why would the public say, say this went to trial, right? Say this went to trial. Let's just say you're a jury member, right? I don't know whether you'd be allowed to be a jury member if you're a medical patient, because it might be conflict of interest, right? But still, for this whole video, let's just say that that's the case. You are a jury member, and you were on the jury of this trial. Were you going to send that lady to prison? Were you? I don't fucking think so. And most people wouldn't have either. Why the police tried to even make this go to trial was absolutely un unbelievable. Only four years ago as well. Four fucking years ago. So well done to Leslie and her husband for being acquitted for something that she literally should have just been allowed to do. We have an article that comes out from The Independent titled Man Caught with £10,000 Worth of Haul Spared Jail After Cancer Patients Defend Life-Saving Treatment. They also put quotes in life-saving treatment as well as if they don't believe them. I don't know, I just thought that was a bit weird. Anyway, in May 2022, we see this man, Andrew Baines. He's a 46-year-old father of two and a cancer patient himself. Now, he was facing a 15-year jail term if prosecutors had gone with the most serious charges, which would have been supplied to intent, right? However, he was actually supplying hundreds of patients with this medicinal oil. And those same patients that he had delivered medicine to wrote into the court describing how they had saved their, how he had saved their lives. And there were, according to this article, scores of letters. So you can imagine when these people that were kind of healed by this man got word that he was facing something, every patient got together and wrote a letter into the courts and was like, no, don't do this. You know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this man. And ultimately, he was served a six month community order. What's interesting is it does say here, giving her ruling at Grimsby Magistrates Court, Deputy District Judge Geraldine Kelly said, I take the view as a community order is justified in this case, not because of you, but because of the message we must send. I thought that was really important. So basically what she's saying is because of the law, they have to be seen as to be doing something, but it's not actually down to what he's done. It's due to the fact that there is this law about what he's done, if that makes sense. Mr. Baines's solicitor actually sums this up in one great sentence. She says they have to differentiate between the medical cases and the county lines cases where people are trying to profit on the black market of illegal substances and the moment the law doesn't allow for a difference between the two to be drawn. Like she literally has smacked it on the edge, right? She's absolutely right. Like there is no law that allows us to differentiate between the two when it comes to herbology growing. We know about the prescription. We know that there's medicinal and there is not medicinal or whatever you want to call it in the eyes of the law. If you have a prescription, you are medicinal. Obviously, if you get it from black market, it's suddenly not. However, there is just such an area of grayness around horticultural issues and how to actually be a gardener yourself as a medical patient, which is against the law. But there is one other small thing that I'd like to just um, make note of. It says in this article here, Mr. Baines, who holds what is known as a CAN card. 
a medical card recognised by police. <laughs> So it's really interesting that they mentioned CAN card there. And I thought I would do just a little update on that whole situation. Again, all the links will be down below to what I'm talking about. So there is this fact sheet, updated fact sheet from August 2023, where it's sporting that they are obviously supported by police and they, the QR code on the card. And, you know, they go over all of that. However, they do go over some of their their plans as to what they were going to do anyway, which is the whole community-owned Grow Lab Organics. So I know that they're working, trying to work with government and assistance to work on the growing for patients and something to do with that type of thing. I don't know how far we've gone with that. I don't touch the can card, you know, I don't have one myself. We went through it a, a, a few months back. However, I thought it would be interesting to put this link down below in this video as that was mentioned in this article in 2022. And the last one we're going to talk about is one that happened just recently on the 6th of November 2023. So just last year. And this is a UK medical patient basically being arrested. This person is actually a 24 year old NHS administrator, which is, you know, quite ironic. He was relaxing with his sister, discussing what to do for his birthday, and he is legally prescribed for anxiety and depression. So he inhaled some of his vaporizer, and then 10 minutes later, two officers come along and said that they could smell it. He explained that he had a prescription, showed the medication, and as soon as they opened it, this is, this is funny to me. As soon as they opened the pot, they said, my medication is not legal. How do you know? Like, what are you talking about? As soon as you open the pot, nah, nah, that's not legal. That, nah, 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 nah. The stuff I got at home, that's legal. This isn't, like, what? How do you know, PC? How do you know? Anyway, I digress. Um, he was arrested because of this. He was handcuffed. He started panicking, obviously retreated in fear before being pinned to the ground by an officer. Yep. Yep. He was then locked in a police cell for six hours. <sighs> he lodged a formal complaint um, and he's not the only medical patient to have been arrested since it was legalised in the UK in November 2018. These articles, like, they just contradict each other. This one says thousands now have private prescriptions for flour and are permitted to vape in public, but among many police officers, there is a lack of understanding about who can access it and where it can be consumed. But... You just heard me speak about CanCard and the fact that they're working with police officers and all the police officers know, right? Well, wrong, clearly, because this happened in November. So get your facts right, CanCard, because clearly it isn't as widely known as you think it is, right? Everything will be put down below, so please sound off in the comments. Let me know how you feel about this, because I was just gobsmacked that we're still going through this, you know? Has times changed? Mm, slightly. Not really, though. Some patients are being let off with the fact that it isn't in the public interest. If it goes to trial, who the fuck is going to send him to prison? This poor woman with all these medical issues. So I don't understand, I don't understand, and if you don't understand, let me know down below. <sighs> Please feel free to like this video, I really, really appreciate it. If you haven't already, feel free to look at some of these interesting videos that are popping up. Some people are now starting to comment about videos I've done before, like the flying out of the country, using your medicine, and they're finding it really useful. So yeah, just have a little look through my playlist and see what videos I've got, because there might be something that you're interested in, and I've already done it. Much love, take care of you and everyone around you. But for now, I'm gonna go medicate. Bye.